Well, good morning, everyone. I'm glad to, that um, we have two new visitors um, back. Uh, Aaron, welcome. You're a welcome addition. And also, Maori. Did I get it right? I got it right. Yes. Got it. Glad you're back. Um, and of course, everyone that has turned out today, it is a blessing to be among the assembly with you as um, we continue in our discussion about the book of John. And throughout the, our study in John, we have been seeing different portraits of Jesus in each chapter. Um, last Sunday, we read John chapter 9, verses 1 through 22. <clears throat> and we saw that Jesus gave sight to a blind man. And the Pharisees, of course, were not happy because um, they're rarely ever happy because the focus wasn't on them. And, hmm? Yeah, no problem. <clears throat> I but those Pharisees must have been miserable when, with themselves. You know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. But um, so Jesus healed this blind man. And now the blind man was being questioned by the Pharisees about who healed him. Um, okay. And remember, this blind man was born blind. He couldn't see before. So turn in your Bibles to John chapter 9. And we'll be in verse 22. But before we begin that, we're going to go into a word of prayer. And if Brother Larry, would you like to open us up in a word of prayer? I have to follow it. <coughs> I have to follow it. Thank you for the opportunity to be here in your house this morning, Lord. Amen. Lord, we just thank you for your presence being here with us this morning, God. Lord, just be with each and every one of us today, Lord God, with your hand upon us, Lord. Lord, we thank you again for the ministry we've got for the Lord. And we know you're working. We've been asking for people, Lord God, for a good while, Lord. And now you're bringing it through to us, Lord God, and we just thank you for that. And Lord, be with Brother Mark, Lord, and Sister Linda, Lord God. And, uh, just be with them, Lord, and touch Brother Mark, sure, Lord, and, and Make it well again, make it suitable, Lord God. Be with each and every one of us, Father, and forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. So um, I'm just going to read back in verse 18, just so we can, then we'll pick up in 22. Um, so it says, But the Jews did not believe concerning him um, that he had been born, or that he had been blind, not that he had been born. <laughs> <laughs> and received his sight until he called the parents of him. I'm doing great right now. I oh, really honey, am. You're on the road. <laughs> received his sight until they called the uh, the parents of him who had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son who you say you, who was blind, born blind? I cannot read today. It's okay, brother. <laughs> How does... I have like that too. <laughs> How then does he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, that he was born blind. But by what means he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age. Ask of him and he will speak for himself. Okay, so now that's going to bring us in verse 22. Somebody can please read 22 and 23. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. synagogue. Mm -hmm. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. Thank you. So as we can see, the, the parents were afraid that if they admit that Jesus is the Christ, they will be put out of the synagogue. Right. Um, because the Pharisees were very much against Jesus because they saw Jesus as a, a rebel. They saw him as somebody that um, disrupted their way of order. Right. But right. if they truly were seeking after God, they would notice that, that Jesus is the Messiah. It's, it's been prophesied many times in the Old Testament. And they, they are the ones, as I said last Sunday, that should know the scriptures. They should know that. Um, 
since they study it, they should know. But people did not want to be put out of the synagogue because of confessing that Jesus is Christ. And honestly, we can see that in the world today of if we're going to be Christians, that we should not be ashamed. Amen. You should not be ashamed to be a Christian, Amen. to please the world. And if any um, church we attend, any church assembly we attend, cannot admit that Jesus is the Christ and that they follow only his doctrine, then that is not the church to be a part of or Amen. the congregation to be a part of. Right. Okay. And, uh, but we should never be ashamed to admit that Jesus is the Christ. We Amen. should. Amen. Not be puffed up with pride in an arrogant sense, but be proud of who Jesus is and what yes, he can do. of course. All right, so um, does anybody have any comments um, or questions from just verse 22 through 23 that Brother Frank read for us? Just this, Brother Arthur. Um, twice here, um, like in verse 21. Mm-hmm. Um, his parents say he is of age ask him he'll speak for himself and then in 23 uh, that is repeated of course I think this is just uh, commenting on what his parents said Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's mentioned again he is of age ask him I think that this is an important aspect in the life of the church. Um, When people come to us bearing gossip or talking about what this person did to me and that person did to me and this person said that and that person said that, I, I think what we need to do is say, well, you know what? Why don't you go talk to them about it? Okay, get to the source. Let them speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. They're of age. They can speak for themselves. Or, you know, I I have often said, well, let's uh, let's go get that person and bring him in. And boy, I'll tell you what, more times than not, bang, that nipped it right in the bud because those people didn't want to get the person they were talking about. Right. Well, as we know, gossip doesn't do anything good. It, it actually hurts people. Oh, wow. It hurts the individual. It hurts yourself. And, and uh, nothing good comes out of gossip. No. And no. Um, God is strictly for, forbids gossiping. Yes. Um, so we shouldn't do that. But I agree. Like, if something's said, well, let's just go to the source. Let's get to the right. root of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and gossip can turn into slander. Yes. Oh. Very true. Definitely. Very true. Definitely. Um, all right. Let's continue now. Can somebody please read? Uh, now we're going to see them asking uh, the young man. Well, I don't know if he was young. I wasn't there. Um, the man... Um, about his response. So somebody read 24 through 26, please. So they again called him man who was blind and said to him, Give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know one thing I know. That through so I was blind, now I see. Mm. Then they said to him again, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? Thank you. So they questioned him uh, once again that they said that Jesus is a sinner. Yeah. He can't be a no. sinner. No. Jesus has never done any sin. Because no. if he did, then he would not be a part of the Godhead. He would not be the Son of God. Amen. He would not be the Messiah. And we, and, uh, if we remember, um, I think it was the last chapter, we saw that um, the woman that would have been uh, stoned to death for committing adultery, the only one that could have thrown a single stone, well, as many stones as he wanted to, right. at her was Jesus. Because he said, He who is without sin cast the first stone. Not one person did. Only Jesus could have. But he told her, 
go, I do not condemn you, go and sin no more. And uh, so he, he is not a sinner. But um, I like what the, young, the, the man said, that um, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. Now look at the spiritual aspect of this. When you were a sinner, could you truly see spiritually? No. Once you become a Christian, your eyes are open. The veil is torn away from being blinded. So then you could truly see in that the life that we once lived, we can't continue living that life anymore. The things you used to watch, the things you used to say, the music you used to listen to, just anything that would not be what Jesus would um, perceive as something that you should be a part of. That's a good way of thinking about things. Uh, would Jesus watch this? Would he listen to this? Would he do this? Yeah. Nine times out of the ten, the answer is going to be no. Right. Because we are called to be holy as Christians. If Christ is holy, then we also must be. Um, not that that's easy because it's not, but strive for it. Do the very best you can. And when we do fall short, because we will, a lot of times we do sure. fall short, um, sure. seek repentance, seek forgiveness, and Christ will forgive you. Yes. But the thing with repentance is to stay away from, get away from, get that. Whatever it is that's holding you back, get it away. Yes. Um, <laughs> all right. Does anybody have any comment from just 24 through 26? interesting how his, um, Jesus healed this one man. And it was, it was a quote-unquote good work and glorified God. And in the same way, we're supposed to be mm-hmm. out sharing, doing good works. Yes. Yeah. To bring others to, to Christ so that their eyes will be open. That's very Amen. good, yes. Yeah. That's very good. And a good way of doing that is how you live your life, too. You, we're supposed to be examples of Christ. And uh, if you work at your job, and it can be very difficult at a job being the only Christian. Mm-hmm. And I, I know that from my own experience. But it, it's hard. But still, you have to be able to um, remember who you re- represent. And um, one thing that I did... Because like what we talked about in the gathering um, that I've been dealing with at work is when I get angry, just start singing a hymnal or something. Or um, start quoting scripture. There you go. And, and, and it helps. Mm-hmm. It helps so much. Yes. When you put God in, in the mix, when you bring God to the battle, you're going to win. Just like David did with Goliath. And I remember a uh, sermon a long time ago I did where... I asked the question, would David defeated Goliath without God? Answer simple, no. Oh, no. He would have been squashed. Oh, he'd have been stepped on like an egg. (laughs) But he brought something much bigger than the spear and the sword and the shield. And whatever Goliath had with him compares nothing to our almighty God. Amen. Um, But thank you, uh, Aaron, for... um, bringing that to our attention too and yeah. you're right we have to be have to go out and help people see the light mm-hmm. and uh, and the light's only from Christ a light of thankfulness a light of, of appreciation mm-hmm. that Christ has done through us and with us and to us and we belong to him yes. yes thank you yes um, anyone else alright let's continue now uh, verse 27 through uh, 30. He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples? Then they revealed him and said, You are his disciples, that we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses as for his fellow. We do not know who, where he is from. Uh, thir- through 30. The man answered and said to them, Why, this is a marvelous thing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he has opened my eyes. Thank you. Uh, and that was reviled him. 
in verse 28, oh. not revealed him. Okay. But just, just have you, right. see, I'm learning words. Okay. You're good, <laughs> yeah. I've, been, I've been practicing. You're good, buddy. <laughs> I love that this man asks them, do you also want to become his disciples? No, they hated Jesus. <laughs> right. Um, right. But, but they said, no, we're disciples of Moses. Mm-hmm. Nobody should be before God. No, no one. No. Um, no. By them saying that, they, have, they are turning Moses into a god to them, mm-hmm. into an idol. Mm-hmm. And Moses, he served God. Right. He went by what God said. Yes. Same thing as many of the patriarchs and many of the prophets. None of them wanted worship. No. That worship belongs to God only. And also, anytime that you saw uh, an angel bringing a message, they did not want worship. The only one that did that said it was okay was Jesus in his pre-incarnate state in the Old Testament. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but only he did not mind worship. Only Jesus didn't mind. He, he never refused it. Never refused it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So nobody else should we follow after. Don't follow after me. Don't follow after Mark. Don't follow after each other. No. As far as being that person's disciples. And that's no. another reason why the church should not bear any other name than that of Christ. Amen. Because he is the one that found it. He is the one that died for it. Yes. No one else. Amen. And I and I don't think any of these other congregations that have like maybe one of the disciples' name, one of the apostles' name, um, would appreciate their name being upon the church. I don't think they would. No. Uh-uh. Uh, good example. There's a well. They they say that Peter is the founder of the church. Peter didn't even die the same way as Jesus. No. He he was crucified upside down because he did not feel it was right to be crucified the exact same way as the Lord. Amen. So he wasn't worthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the Jews always refer back to the Old Testament, and that's what they're doing. They're bringing up Moses. Because that was under the law. Sure. You know, they, always, mm-hmm. they still to this day don't believe that Jesus is a Messiah. That's right. You know, which is sad. Mm-hmm. They make a lot of money off of, over Israel, what they call Israel. They make a lot of money off of him, but they don't want to even believe in him. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. That is sad. That just blows my mind. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, does anybody have anything to add to our discussion from 27 through 30? It's just interesting that, uh, that Jesus, he says, the scriptures testify about him, but yet they're, here they are stuck, the Pharisees are stuck in their, in this mode of thinking that mm-hmm. is um, different, and, and, and Jesus is calling them to uh, look at my, look at my, Look what I'm doing. There's mm-hmm. a man who was born blind. I've healed him. They right. still, still don't know where he's from. And they're like, <laughs> who is this? I mean, so they're still stuck in their old ways and their way of thinking. And it's yeah. mm-hmm. astounding. So. Very true. And, it, 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 and with that, um, as I said before, that the Pharisees are the ones that would be you would go to for like religious matters and for spiritual matters. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but... The ones that got it were your regular people, fishermen, carpenters, uh, you know, um, people that uh, were tax collectors, people that were sinners. They flocked to Jesus because he represented hope and he represented, you know, the light that's coming into the world. Yes. Um, They got it. But here you have these people that are... More, educated. they're more educated. Good yeah, answer. Because what I would have said would sound God stupid. <laughs> because they're not looking at the spiritual aspect; they're looking at the physical. Mm-hmm. Everything that Jesus did, there was a spiritual aspect of it. Sure. And that was the good thing when he did the parables, because it for those that were speaking spiritually, mm-hmm. they would get it. Yes. And those that did not, because they're not looking through the spiritual mindset. That's true. I wonder if they really got it, though. It's, it's, like they, it's interesting how when he, when he called the disciples, he kind of picked them 
okay, this one and this one and this one, and they immediately left their nets and whatever, their businesses and their lifestyle mm-hmm. and after them. Like, what did they kind of see, see in that? Yes. Right. The, yes. The, what was there? What yeah. was there that they saw mm-hmm. yeah. in, in Jesus? That I don't know, I was converted and the guy reached out to me and I just, he invited me to, Bible, to a Bible study. I was like, oh, right there. It was like, was there something that God was working on my heart at the time? Right. God was working on the hearts of these disciples. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good. But it took, I mean, it, well, they spent time with Jesus, but they still didn't give until, I guess, much later until well, the book of Acts and where Peter was preaching the first gospel sermon. Mm-hmm. But, I agree with that. I think it's like they, they noticed something. And remember, God looks at the heart of the person. He knows exactly who the person is and what potential they would have. And it's the same thing with all of us. You all came out today. Yeah. You all made it your goal. I'm going to be in the assembly today. Amen. Nothing's going to stop me. Mm-hmm. So there's something that Jesus does yes. that you want to be a part of. And um, mm-hmm. just like you said, that where they, they saw something. And the majority of the time, all Jesus said was, follow me. Right. That's all he said. He didn't give no other explanation why you need to follow me. Right. Follow me. They cast down their nets and said, okay. I mean, I don't know if they said okay like that, but <laughs> they just went. That was an expression. Yeah. <laughs> but they saw something in him. And then through the workings of Jesus throughout his ministry, they started to notice something even more. And God even reveals it to them, it to, to Peter. When all those other disciples, uh, all those people that were following Jesus left him, he asked them, Do you want, are you now going to leave me? And Peter said, where shall we go? You have the words to eternal life. Yeah. God revealed that to Peter. Uh-huh. And, and that's, I like Peter a lot because I, I can relate to him oh, so too. much because Peter would step out first, you know, stepping out in faith, not, maybe not all the way ready, but still, at least he took the initiative right. to step out. Right. Um, then, like you said, though, first one to preach uh, a sermon after the, conver- um, the, um, the day of Pentecost, the, yeah. on the day of Pentecost. Uh-huh. So, thank you very much. Uh, anybody else have anything? I do. <laughs> well, we knew that, so... <laughs> That's a given. That's right? why everyone was silent. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> this thing of, <clears throat> you know, we're Moses' disciples and we have Abraham as our father. Um, this this principle, I guess you would say, this, this mindset can be seen in many congregations of the Lord's church. Uh-huh. Um, you know they elevate the preacher or they elevate the elders or uh, maybe another individual in the congregation um, there, there was a man who, who we know uh, not in this area but uh, he was an elder in a congregation of the Church of Christ. Well, things in that congregation got so so bad that he and his wife started going to another congregation. So I, I was asking, you know, what how they were getting along in this in this congregation, mm-hmm. and uh, oh. Great, and 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 this man told me he said uh, he said the preacher there can just quote from Greek. He knows Greek. He knows Greek words, and he can say those Greek <laughs> words and tell you what they mean. He said, in fact, now here's here's the grammar. He said, in fact. He preaches so good and right out of the Bible, I don't even bother taking my Bible to church. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I said, That's a whoa! <laughs> so, 
he, who used to be an elder now, now, in name, you know, I, I don't know, I don't want to get into whether he was qualified or not. I would never have ordained him as an elder myself. But, uh, you know, went to this other congregation and he's so impressed with the man up front that he took his eyes mm -hmm. off the Lord. Just like Peter in the sea. Mm -hmm. But this man said, we don't need the Bible. Yes. Is that very dangerous? Very dangerous. Whoa. Whoa. That's very yeah. dangerous. We are all responsible to, for our own salvation. And... Um, you should always bring your Bible, or even if you have your phone that has Bible on it, because some people do that too. Yes. Which, as long as you have the Bible, because the Bible has been done in many forms, and you have to have to watch out what the <laughs> the version is, right? And uh, <clears throat> right. Uh, tran like um, translation is, because the more they translate the Bible and do different words, kind of weakens that Bible. Uh, we had a young lady that used to go here. Her Bible was the Contemporary English Bible. And the part where it says Jesus wept, it just said Jesus cried a little. There's a difference in crying a little and weeping. Yes, of course. It's very important to just have, like the New King James is the one I use. And this is the closest to the original manuscript. And that... And, it stood the test of time, just like the King James Version. Right. It just, New King James right. uses words that are more understandable, but they still go word for word. Yeah. Because to me, it was very hard with the King James of how to read it. <laughs> I used it for years, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I used it while probably, let's see, 30 years or more. Mm hmm Uh after I became a preacher and, and you know, for years prior, uh, before that, the denomination that uh, I grew up in used uh, the Revised Standard Version. And man, that thing is poison. Mm -hmm. it, it is. And, um, but, you know, I... I hung on to King James for so many years and all the scriptures I memorized were out of King James so if I go to quoting rather than reading mm -hmm. it, it's not going to be the same as it is in your Bibles but um, the point is like Arthur said um, King James uh, you know has integrity uh, it has been put to the test of the, the uh, Bible canon. Uh, it has shown itself to be accurate. And of course, there were obvious inaccuracies in the old mm -hmm. King James. Um, but, you know, it, it's kind of like my mother-in-law, Linda's mother, said one time, she said, she said, you know why people want these, these new translations? And I said, why? She said, they want TV dinners instead of home cooking. That's true. <laughs> they, <laughs> speaking of that, there is, a, there is a Bible out right now I saw in a Christian bookstore. It just says the story. And on the back cover of it, it says, who's got time to read the Bible? Oh, we my. just take out the good parts you need to hear. Oh. And I'm like, that's what you're selling? Um, but let's get back to the Bible, since we're speaking of that. Uh, somebody, please uh, read 31 through 34. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. Since the world began... It has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. Mm. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. Mm -hmm. They answered and said to him, You were completely born in sins, and are you teaching us? 
Mm. And they cast him out. That is so good. I love this man's response to them. If Jesus was not from God, which he is God, he could do nothing. Right. He could not open the eyes of the blind. That's true. And if we are not operating in God, our testimony to tell other people about how to become a Christian will not work. Right. If we're living a life of sin and then still trying to be in a Christian on Sunday morning, your testimony will not work. Mm -hmm. Yep. You have to live the life. Amen. You cannot play both sides because your salvation is not a game. No. God don't play games. He's dead serious when it comes to this. <laughs> um, and that's how we should be. We should be dead serious when it comes to the Lord. Because uh, the, the Lord should be not mocked and he should not be made as a joke. Um, not one bit. And no. I've learned that through doing the... Um, the bulletins I used to put in comic strips in there, and, and Brother Mark showed me some of the comics that were part of it, and I didn't see, I didn't notice how it was turning some things into a joke. Yeah. Like making fun of the Lord. Yeah. And I'm glad he pointed that out because then now I'm more wiser of what to put in. Yeah. Um, and not just going with, well, that looks funny. Yeah. Yeah. So, look at this remarkable man. That he is teaching the Pharisees things that they should already know. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody have any comments about his response to them about that God does not hear sinners and that, um, and but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he will, he hears him. Do y'all have any comments about what he spoke of here? I think when Paul said, Work out, work, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is a an idea of working it out. So there's yes. this idea of doing what God desires, which is what basically does His will. Mm -hmm. And and of course, what, we, what God desires is written in the Scriptures. We have everything we need for life and godliness for our knowledge of Him and Paul's by His own. So. Um, this idea of working out your salvation. You, talk, you, talk, you spoke about how we're to be serious about mm -hmm. our salvation. And yeah. Paul was kind of getting at that too, and to work out your salvation. Thank you. Yeah, we're supposed to be here to glorify God in ourselves. Amen. That's true. Amen. Yeah, that, that's good, because I remember I saw a video of Joel Osteen's wife, and she says, you know, God doesn't want you to worship him. He wants you to worship yourself. It's about worshiping you. Really? And I'm just like, are you kidding me? And people follow this baloney. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, worship belongs to God and God only. Right. Because if we worship ourselves, how vain is that? And how, you know, we are not God. No. Nor do we deserve any worship. Right. When we worship God in fear and trembling and in humility, you will be uplifted by God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, um, does anybody else have anything to add from 31 through 34 that I have yet to hear from? Excuse me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know we ain't the only ones we're working brains today. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm thinking too much. No, don't no, no worry. Don't worry, Mark takes up it all. <laughs> all right. Um, with that, let's we're gonna we're we're gonna end up finishing this chapter today. I know we are because we only got uh, looks like six six verses to go, uh -huh. and um, we're gonna be in verse thirty five. Dad, would you like to read for us thirty five through thirty seven? That's right. You've been you've been silent too long. <laughs> Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of Jesus? Of Son of God. Of God. <laughs> he answered and said, Who is he? Lord, uh, mm. who is he? Lord, that I may believe in him. Keep going. 
Uh, yes, read 37, uh, thir- to 38, actually. Um, and Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. Uh, then he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Thank you. So they kicked this man out. They cast him out. He's out of the synagogue. Best thing's ever happened to him. <laughs> Best thing. Because right. he met Jesus and he has something better. Amen. Yes. One of the best things that dad has told me is he has left the Catholic Church. He left that whole uh, way that they were doing it and the the doctrine they were under. And he, oh. um, from what dad has told me, they were so super strict on everything. I mean, he could talk better than I can. But to leave something for something even better. To truly be a part of the Lord's church, to truly know Him, Dad, would you like to add anything about about that? Yeah, you have, I mean, um, I had an experience, but um, you have to really watch um, the church you pick because they can really brainwash you, and that's what the Catholic Church did to me. It brainwashed me so bad that I didn't know right from wrong, and I would have to say. 20 Hail Marys and all this. And I was like, and that's supposed to help me. But I didn't know at that time. But now I do know that I don't have to pray for nobody but God. You know? Amen. Amen. He's going to be the healer. He's going to help me. And everything mm-hmm. else. But over there, you, I mean, I had godfathers and godmothers. I mean, that is not written anything in the Bible, first of all. Right. I haven't seen And, um, that's just American made stuff that makes the church um, do like you're a cult. Yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, okay, now you're doing this. Oh, you're getting communion. You're getting um, blessed by sprinkle. You know, through <laughs> baptism and everything. I saw, and then they say you could go to special um, statues. Because I'm not calling them anything else. But, um, to pray and light a candle and everything else, who else would you pray to except God? Right. I mean, I don't go to a St. John or whatever and pray, oh, well, he's a healer and he's going to help. What does God do? I mean, and then you have to bow down when you go to the altar. You have to kneel down and say that. That is not my job to do that because I'm worshiping something that is against my belief anyway. Right. And that right. it's not God. I will kneel for God. Amen. I'm not going to kneel down for a person that's on And he's off the cross. He's on right. the cross still. He's so, off. I mean, he's off Jesus is off. So why would I kneel to something that's going to make him still suffer that area? And I started learning. I said, you know, I have to find another church. This is just working my mind. And sure enough, I did it. And I'm very grateful because mm-hmm. the teaching is right. Amen. Thank you, bro. And you've been a blessing to the church for sure, like you all have been a blessing to the church. And to be here, you know, among you all, it, it, that does bring me a lot of joy to see yes, the room growing, to yes. see more people. Yes. And, um, but this, one of the best things that's happened to this man, kicking him out. Go ahead, kick me out, because I will still, I'm going to follow that man uh-huh. who revealed my eyesight. I couldn't see before. Now I right. see. Yes. And then Jesus reveals him. And he said, Lord, I believe it with an exclamation point. To me, that sounds like excitement. Yes. And he worshipped him. Amen. Jesus didn't forbid him to worship him. No. Once again. Um, so let's finish it out. Somebody read verse 39 through 41, please. And Jesus said for judgment. may see, and that those who see may be made blind. Then some of the prophecies, Pharisees, of Pharisees <laughs> who were with him, heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, We see, therefore you sin remains. Thank you. So some of the Pharisees 
heard what Jesus said, are we blind? If you were blind, you would have no sin, but now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. They're still mm-hmm. blind to the fact that here is the Messiah, the one you've been waiting for, yes. and you can't see him. But a blind man who received a sight said, this is who I'm going to follow. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep. So Jesus truly is the light of the world. He brings light into the darkness. Because the darkness cannot comprehend the light. Right. Right. Uh, does anybody have anything to share from what we have read today that has, um, that the Lord is revealing to you that he didn't reveal to you before? <laughs> Brother Frank. No, I didn't. Uh, we all start off blind mm-hmm. and our things. And then when we get closer, um, we do see the light and we do become closer to God. But we do actually start off blind because we're trying to learn and we're trying to disbelieve what things are saying, but it's the truth. Mm-hmm. And um, it's like a tunnel. If you stay in a tunnel, it gets dark. Mm-hmm. And then there's just a little, little light, but you're trying to get to it. But you have to believe you're going to get to that light. And that's what um, you find the light, and then you're baptized, and then you're with God. Mm-hmm. And everything we do, it cannot be somewhat wrong. You know, because he's writing them all down in his dictionary. Or, dictionary. Uh, <laughs> in the dictionary. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, I mean, whatever you do every day, he knows it's written. So we try to be as good as we can. Because we're not mm-hmm. going to be perfect. No. I mean, there's no We're way. not. Uh, but we got to watch the sin and everything else. I mean, that's the Old Testament where you were stoned for it. Anything, or yeah. or whatever, and we watch and we do pray, and you have to go to bed pure, like you do your prayers at night. And I always do every night, and um, I tell God, thank you for giving me life mm-hmm. like every day. Yes, and I, I'm going to sleep, and hopefully tomorrow I have another life. But if not, I know where I'm going. You know, yeah. you don't ever put a negative where you can put a positive. Amen. That's and true. And your mind will just. Do the pot because that's the devil then. Mm-hmm. If you go negative, it's going to keep going. You'll just like keep going. Yeah. yeah. But if you stay positive, that person's out of your way, the devil. And then God is going to say, take, take my hand and I'll guide you the rest of the way. Just trust in me. Thank you, brother. Well, and, and the Lord said, resist the devil and he will flee. Uh-huh. Right. Even for another up to two time, but you continue to resist the devil and he will flee. And one of the best ways to resist the devil, just get into the Bible. Yep. When you feel like you got that itching ear from Satan, do this, do that. Grab your Bible out. Start reading scripture. If you only have your phone that has a Bible app on it, read some scripture. Because when you get into the Bible, the, the devil doesn't really have that much of a hold on you. But when you start contemplating and thinking about what he wants you to do. And a lot of times people blame the devil. The devil made me do that. No. He suggested it, but you went through with it. Right. You did it. Yeah. And uh, it's something that Adam and Eve did not do in the garden. They blamed someone else. Right. Instead of saying, yes, I did it. Uh, Aaron? Yeah, I was going to think that all of us in our daily walk with Jesus would we need to be blinded. I think we know when we come before the scriptures when we come before our, our daily walk, our denial, daily denying ourselves and following Christ, mm-hmm. Jesus, Jesus, Lord of our daily walk, our daily life. We've got to look at, we've got to be blind so we can see. We got, we got to let our the eyes, our heart, what should we say? Let our eyes, our heart be enlightened. Yeah. The That's eyes true. and our heart be enlightened. And when we mm-hmm. go to the Bible and read, and we have to go in, in with the attitude. What's been, what's been preached to me? That is, we're going to obey what it says. Yes. Yeah. Humbly, right. we're going to obey what it says and do what it says. That's Amen. good. And to go along with that about being blinded to things and to go along with what you're saying, um, um, Dad, is when we go to, to pray, and um, it's very important to pray during the morning, the afternoon, uh, honestly, at all times before you go to bed. But when you go into your prayer closet, you put your blindness on to the world. The world is not welcomed into your space 
with God. That is between you and Him. Yeah. They are no longer allowed in. Mm-hmm. But that's your time. Yes. And um, it was suggested... I can't remember who said it. I, I don't know if it was you, uh, Mark, about putting uh, earplugs in. Yeah, I, I said that. Um, When you go... No, don't do it all the time, you know, where you're just out and about wearing <laughs> earplugs. You can't hear. <laughs> but when you're in your prayer closet or wherever you have your time with the Lord by yourself, put them in and then that way there's no more noise. There's no more distractions. Well, that's what I do, what, at 7 o'clock at mm-hmm. I let animals out. Let me out. Uh, He's not allowed to talk to me. <laughs> that's right, that's his time me, with the Lord. God's time to learn the Bible and uh, <laughs> feel exactly what I'm reading. Oh, there's no and noise in that house. No, <laughs> it's silent. It's silent. I quiet. And I didn't have to put earplugs in but I was thinking about it. But, I mean, if it's my time that hour, to me, that's not even enough time for God. Right. You know, but I'm telling you, that I'm not going to bed. You are on my mind. Mm-hmm. I praise you, and I love you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what I'm learning. So, mm. they respect me, because, you know, some families don't respect your private time. That's true. That's and, true. Um, they do, and I am where I am, because I have insomnia. But God's working His way. To make me at least sleep a little bit, and I'm here. As mm-hmm. long as I'm here, I'm happy. Yeah. They're gonna have to put me like in a coma before I come. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, here. I'm really grateful. Thank you, Dad. Um, with that, we're gonna close out in a word of prayer, and then we'll reconnoiter in the church assembly room. <laughs> the other, the other room. Aaron, we don't know what that word means. Reconnoiter, but we use it. It sounds good. Are you impressed? I'm not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, we did it. I know we'll rejoin with each other. <laughs> you better call Guinness World Record right there. Okay, this is the blind leading the blind. I know the blind. All right. Well, join me on a word of prayer, and then um, we'll go to the next room over. <laughs> Dear gracious Heavenly Father, I am so humbly thankful, Lord, um, to have these fine folk that have come out today that wanted to hear the word, to um, to be a part of your church, Lord, the church that you have founded. Mm-hmm. That is, your name is upon it and no other name. Amen. Lord God, we praise you, we worship you, we adore you. Lord God, I pray that what we have talked about today has been well-pleasing to you. That nothing that we have said would uh, contradict the Bible, because we don't want to contradict the Bible at all. And we don't want to add to or take away. Mm -hmm. But we just want to go by you, Lord. And I pray that we have done our best effort, and that um, the people here have learned something that maybe they didn't know, or that has reinforced their faith in you. Mm -hmm. Lord God, as we go to the next assembly, Lord, please um, watch over us, guide us, and protect us in that. And that um, what will be said there and also the songs that we will sing that will be praising you will be well pleased to you. Um, I pray that the Holy Spirit will be over all of us and that um, the words that Brother Mark will be bringing to us in the sermon today will be beneficial. That we each will leave with something that we can use um, to further our relationship with you and that it will also be something that will reinforce uh, Mark's faith in you as well. Uh, we ask this all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed.